Good morning, dear friends. And again, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This new day, I pray that you shall live a very, very fruitful and useful life for the glory of God. Now, before we begin our activities for today, let us hear the voice of God. The Spirit of God speaks to us. And we shall continue from the study of the farmer sowing the seed. This is a continuation of yesterday's meditation. There are two great lessons, we said. And the first lesson is of sowing the seed. A genuine follower of Jesus Christ is to sow the seed wherever he may be. And the seed, we found out, is the word or the gospel. And so here the seed does not mean money. You give money to some ministries. But we must now, by saying that yesterday, I did not mean that we should not give. But the Bible also gives us instructions as to how we must give in a disciplined way which God honors. You must give your tithes. You must give your offerings. We must, you must give in support of the mission work, sending out missionaries and supporting them so that the word of the Lord may spread. We must do all that. But you must be attached to a local church, a, a missionary church, a church which believes in the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ or preaching the gospel everywhere. And that is where your money must go. And uh, that has to be done disciplined way through a local church where you are a part. You support the ministries of your local pastor and his, uh, uh, according to his uh, instructions. And may the Lord bless you as you continue to give and honor the Lord and help spreading the gospel in our nation or wherever uh, it is needed. And so that you must understand. And let us now look into the second lesson. The second lesson is to the hearers. Yesterday's meditation was sowing the seed. And today, uh, when we sow the seed of the gospel or the word, um, uh, today's meditation has to do with the hearers. Now, Jesus used this parable to tell how the gospel will be received uh, in the world. Three truths may be understood or learned in this regard. Number one, conversion and fruitfulness depend on how one responds to the gospel of Jesus Christ or God's word. That you read in, the gospel, in this passage of Mark Gospel, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. But if you read continuously following, uh, uh, follow this, this passage, from verses 14 to 20, you read about this, what I just mentioned. That is, conversion and fruitfulness depend on how one receives the seed or the word of God. And secondly, uh, there will be a mixed response or reaction to the gospel by the world. Some who hear will not understand. That is in verse 15. And thirdly, others who will believe unto salvation, but who will later fall away. And this you read verses 16 to 19. And thirdly, uh, still others will believe unto salvation, persevere, and bear fruit in different degrees. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. This we read in verse 20. So there are enemies of God's word as well working against the word that is preached so that people mostly will fall into the second category. They will not understand what they hear and they ignore it. And uh, what are these enemies? Who are they? Number one, Satan. 
Satan will do all he can to stop people hearing the word or receiving the seed. And the second one is worldly concerned. The deceitfulness of riches and the worldly concern uh, will block the growth of the seed that is heard. And uh, then thirdly, uh, there is the riches and pleasures of this life. Uh, you read this, uh, 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 this in verses 15 to 19. Okay, response to the gospel message vary as the soil differs from one place to another place. Uh, and response usually is twofold. The disciple hears the word. He does not hear the words. Only he hears the message. Now, how does he hear the message? When you hear with your heart, do you know that your heart has eyes? Do you know that uh, your heart also has ears? Your heart can see, your heart can hear. And now, how do you listen with your heart? You listen with your heart, first of all, when you receive the word, and then you think about the word you received, and then you begin to meditate on it. Now, what does this word really say, speak to you? And then you get the message into your life. And these are the process that you go through in hearing the message. When you hear the word, you do not just simply hear only the words, but you hear the message. And these are the process that you go through. You receive the word and then think about it. And then you be begin to meditate on it, to think seriously, trying to understand what the message is. And then get the message into your life. And then you apply the message into your practical life every day. And that is when you begin to have the fruit coming into your life. The disciple is willing to do exactly what the parable teaches. Now, what does the parable teach us? Psalm number 62, verse 11. Psalm number 62, verse 11. Let me read it for you. Verse 11 says, One thing God has spoken, two things have I heard, that you, O God, are strong. God has spoken one thing, and the listener has heard two things. Now, how does that happen? What you heard, you begin to think and you begin to meditate. And then you begin to have the message uh, coming into your heart. Now that is what it means. So I pray that this shall be your experience in the days to come when you hear something. Now for example this meditation as you are hearing, you are receiving the word into the soil of your heart. And after you listen, you begin to think about what you heard. And then you begin to meditate. And that is how the real message gets into your heart. And so this Psalm 62 verse 11 is an example of hearing more than the word. And that means hearing the message contained in the word. You hear the message when you meditate. And Psalm number 1 verse 2 says, His meditation shall be, uh, he, he will meditate the commandments, on the commandments, day and night. Who is he? Psalm number 1 talks about a blessed man. Who is a blessed man? And one of the things a blessed man experiences is that you 
receive the commandments of God and then you meditate day and night what this command means and that's how you get the message of the commandments into your heart and then you apply in your practical life that's how you hear the message true revelation or vision is not that anyone receiving anything in addition to one has already been revealed to in God's word but it is receiving the message in God's word you know some people are going around saying that he received a new revelation and my friends in this also do not be deceived God is not going to give any fresh revelation to anyone which is not revealed already in God's word. And so if anybody comes along and say, some, there are so many of these modern preachers say, God has given me a new revelation which is not revealed earlier. And by that, he is claiming to be a greater prophet and a greater person than Jesus Christ himself. Whatever God has to reveal to you and to me and to the world, he has already done it through his son, Jesus Christ. He is the last and perfect expression of God and his will. So any revelation anybody receives has to be in conformity with the revealed uh, revelation that is already given to us in God's word. And if does not agree with God's word, you can reject it. And you don't need to be afraid. Sometimes we accept false teachings because we are afraid if we don't receive, then curse will come on us because he's a man of God. Who told you he's a man of God? See, you must understand you need to have a good grounding in the knowledge of God's word in order to distinguish between what is false and what is wrong. I am right. And uh, always remember, let us look into this um, uh, Psalm number 119 verses 97 to 104. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands make me uh, wiser than my enemies for they are ever with me I have more insight than all my teachers for I meditate on your statutes I have more understanding than the elders for I obey your precepts oh yes I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Remember my friends, if you want to be wise, if you want to have a greater insight than your teachers, up, uh, David says, I have more insight than my teachers. I have more understanding. I am wiser than my elders. Why? Because I not only heard the commandments of God and I not only read, but I think and I meditate. I meditate day and night. And that's what to give me enlightenment and better understanding. So if you need to have that kind of understanding, the real truth of the truth of God, you begin to meditate. You, all you have to do is, my friends, you don't have to go seeking for a prophet to tell you a new revelation, which will, which will be a deception. Please understand that. You want a greater understanding? You read the precepts, the laws of God in revealing God's word and then you meditate upon it. As you meditate, you pray, O Holy Spirit of God, you are the best teacher and so enlighten me 
and he gives you the enlightenment he gives you understanding and that's how you hear the message of the word you hear when you meditate and that will lead you into the path of righteousness and you become a stronger and a fruitful follower of Jesus Christ in whom God will be well pleased and you do not to be afraid and so receiving the message if more important than just merely listening or hearing the word and the second truth that we learn from this parable is uh, the unbeliever hears the parable but how does he hear he hears not with spiritual ears he just hears the words that is all Jesus called an unbeliever an outsider someone who has not yet understood the truth and submitted himself to the uh, the, to, to the to the to the truth of God's word. He does exactly what Jesus said in verse twelve of the gospel according to Saint Mark chapter four. What is what? What did Jesus say about them? Uh, so that he he, he uh, they may be ever seeing but never perceiving. And ever hearing but never understanding otherwise they might turn and be forgiven see that is what an unbeliever he is always hearing every Sunday in the church and every Bible study he keep on hearing but never perceive never understand the truth because he does not give himself to understanding he does not think he does not meditate and he does not even bother to ask if there is something he is not understanding. He is always welcome to ask the senior pastor or some mature Christian leaders. And my brothers and sisters, let me encourage you that you... There is another psalm which says, God has spoken once and I have heard it twice. Now, how do you hear God twice when he has spoken only once? The second hearing is through your meditation. You heard God speaking the word and then you give yourself to time to meditate on it. Think about it and trust the Holy Spirit to enlighten you and give you understanding. And that is the way you hear a second time and moreover another way you hear it second time is when you simply obey what you have heard even if it is difficult for you to obey nevertheless you obey because God has spoken then you are hearing a second time and that will bless your life and that will enrich your knowledge and you are inside. God bless you as you give yourself to meditating on God's word and not falling into deception of people who comes around preaching false teaching and, and draw you to believe what is not in the Bible. Be careful my, my friends, don't be deceived. These are the days of false prophets and false teachers and their numbers are increasing. May the Lord protect you from all that while you yourself will continue to grow in understanding of God's will and purposes for your life. God bless you. This is a great day and have a great and wonderful useful day ahead. Father, I thank you for your son Jesus Christ. I thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit who helps us to understand the words that Jesus has spoken to us. And by understanding, we may put them into practical life 
that we may be blessed indeed and bring forth fruit for the glory of God. And various degrees, 30, 60, and 100 fold. May the Lord bless you as you continue to live and glorify Jesus. Amen. Praise God.